Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well and you guys are taking care of yourselves. So this is further information that I received from a higher aspect of myself, um, sort of a, uh, you know, fifth dimensional expression of myself. So I guess one could in effect say me. Um, so I uh, typically receive this information in the form of automatic writing. Uh, and then sometimes I'm sort of given um, situational examples in my reality that uh, sort of serve as a learning opportunity. Uh, and so that's, you know, part of the way that I receive this information. So I will break this up into two parts. First, I will read the automatic writing part that I received sort of the, you know, transmission, if you want to call it that. And then after that, I will go in and break it down and analyze and provide some, you know, additional um, points onto that. So first, I will read the transmission. Um, I will also note two things very briefly that I just thought of. Uh, the first thing, uh, there are, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, punctuation here that might be a little bit challenging to communicate verbally. So um, I'm going to put the text of this in the description box and I will also post it and give you the link to my website where I have all of my, um, well not all, but I have some of my uh, written messages transcribed and you can go on there and take a look as well. Um, secondly, I am passing along this information again, like I said, from a you know a higher aspect of myself. Um, in spite of that, I do not want it to come across as though I'm claiming I have this mastered because I do not. <laughs> uh, these are things that I'm truly you know working on every day, every moment. So um, I don't want to. Uh, you know, give the impression that I am, you know, a master of this, um, but I, you know, in, in concordance with what we're going to talk about, um, you know, you do have to believe that you will uh, become the master of it. So I do have that belief, um, but I also have the awareness that I have not got it down quite yet. Okay. So some of the reason why I I pass along this information is really, um, you know, to, to re-articulate it, to reiterate the message for myself, too. So um, hopefully it, you know, helps you and, and resonates with you. If not, of course, it's, you know, either not your time to come across the information or it's, um, you know, simply not your truth that you will subscribe to. Okay, so let me go ahead and read the transmission. If you spend your time working for money, if you are still weaving stories about the crimes of others, you have not yet realized that you are free. You have not yet attuned your consciousness into the awareness that you are the creator. What seems to be obligatory is actually very clever illusion and distortion that, along with time, keep your perception narrowed and your frequency low. If you are still following the clock, serving as a tool of your tools, understand that is okay. All is experience. In truth, you answer to no one. You need no one's approval to make the journey to higher consciousness and begin creating. The only quote-unquote barrier to your ascension 
is the one which your mind has placed there. The things in your reality will cease to exist if that is what you desire. The memory of these aspects of yourself, of your dark creations, can fade away into the background, returning to the mosaic of experience that has rendered you. In this, there is then space to create that which you do desire. Remember, however, that desire wrought with fear in lieu of love will manifest just the same. If something does not resonate with you, do not make it a part of your story. Fear begets fear. Those intentions, however, that are forged in unconditional love are thusly returned to you in that same form. Okay, so uh, now I will go into uh, more of an analysis of that message along with providing some other information as well. So um, again, as you sort of let go of your um, attachment to third dimensional linear time, then your manifestations begin to speed up and eventually become instant. And of course we know that that can, you know, present itself in our reality as either a positive experience, um, which would be something desired, um, or a negative experience, which would be something that is not desired. So um, I'll clarify that, um, my use of negative and positive there. Remember um, the quantum field and manifesting in it, it's impersonal, in, excuse me, impersonal and it's impartial. Um, and it is unrelated to what we have deemed to be morality. So there is no right or wrong. There's only your particular truth. And so the field is responsive. This is both a good and bad thing, or it's both a desired thing and an undesired thing can be, uh, because you, uh, because it is responsive, you have the ability to control it. So you become, you, you begin to start um, the process of becoming the creator of your own reality. So you're no longer the thing that is created. You are the creator. And so this, this is really, you know, the shift that, that we're talking about here. So um, because of this, it really is imperative that you are continually aware of everything that, go that comes into your field. So I, I've said this many times, but I'll say it again because it, it always bears repeating. Um, everything that you hear, everything you see, um, everything that you read, it comes into your, you know, it is processed in your field. And equally, you have to be aware of your own output. So, you know, that in that way, um, you know, that's one of the ways that we are all connected, you know, whatever your output is, um, can impact, um, the reality that you see presented to you. I'll put it that way. Um, it's important to remember that if you think of something, it exists in the quantum field in some form or fashion. So, I did a sort of, I made sort of a crude <laughs> uh, diagram here. I'm not great with design, but um, I hope this will, this is the, the drawing that I got in my, in my mind. So let me try to explain it as well as I can. So essentially, um, you know, we have here, we think about your specific, uh, frequency. So this is the input. It's, um, you know, the part of the, however you are vibrating, um, that is the input that you are putting out into the field. And, um, 
you will in turn receive the output, of course, which is your manifestation or your external, what appears to be external reality. And these are all infinite. So if we think about this, you know, the top one here as being positive, high vibration, high frequency, that's infinite. You know, I couldn't draw enough lines here to, to indicate that because it's everything exists in the field. So also, um, the same thing, it is infinitely, um, you know, can be infinitely low vibrational, low frequency as well. And so that's how you are able to achieve your desired output. And um, so basically, if you look, if you think about, you know, um, that your, your, um, particular frequency in any given situation is manifesting here. It's like at the, you know, the bottom, if, if there was a bottom, again, it's infinite, but it's, you know, the lowest um, vibrational field that you can think of. I'll put it that way. So what you have to do in that situation is take that and move it up. You have to um, do whatever you need to do to begin vibrating um, at a higher frequency. So um, sometimes that can be, you know, even, um, you know, listening to happy music, as trite as that sounds, it can, it truly can help um, in very tangible ways. Uh, it can be watching a happy movie, you know, just taking a break from anything, you know, that's too heavy. Um, or if it, you know, makes you happier, if it makes you, um, get into a higher frequency state, you can, you know, read, do research about, you know, consciousness, all of that. Um, so again, let's say we're manifesting up, we're vibrating up here. Our manifestation is, is also going to be up here. You know, it's going to match that same, um, resonance. Um, what is important to note, let's say we're, um, manifesting and this can, can really go both ways, but we're going to look at it from like the lower vibrational standpoint. So let's say we are manifesting at again, like the lowest frequency that we can, you know, reach that we can think of. Um, you know, we think like it's, it's the worst, whatever the situation is you're in your mind, you're thinking, this is going to turn out um, terrible, you know, we're all going to die or, you know, whatever, um, whatever that, that may look for, look like for you. Um, so we know that you're going to achieve a manifestation that is equal to that. And the problem with that, um, what adds on to that is whatever that low frequency manifestation turns out to be, is going to be reflected back to you. And of course, it's the same at the higher frequencies as well, but it becomes problematic when it's a lower frequency, right? Um, so it's reflected back to you in lower resonance, or excuse me, in lower frequency. Um, so it is, it becomes a loop. Okay, so that is why we see, uh, that's part of the reason why you'll see, um, yourself getting in the same, you know, situation. Probably when you began to awaken, you attracted, for example, the same type of person, the same personality type. And as long as you kept responding to that in the same way, um, that person kept reflecting, kept, you know, literally giving that back to you. And so, um, this is what they talk about. Um, this is what they, they, <laughs> the proverbial, they are referring to, um, when we talk about karma, this in, in my perspective, this is what karma is. Uh, karma is not, um, only, you know, doing something that is perceived to be wrong to someone else, um, which we could say they're essentially one in the same. It is, um, it becomes this like loop 
our wheel of reincarnation when we continue to generate the same negative scenarios. When we're vibrating at a higher level and when our goal is to continue to raise that frequency time and time again, it, it sort of breaks out of that loop because it's no longer at a low frequency um, that has been imposed upon us in the third dimension of consciousness, of earth consciousness. So um, again, it's just really imperative to understand and and trust me, this takes a lot of training and intentionally reminding yourself. Um, so if your input is negative, if it's something you do not desire, remember it's amoral, okay? It's not concerned with morality. Um, your output will be negative as well. And it's not, um, you know, it's not a judgment, it's not a punishment, it is simply these laws. It's the laws of, um, of the quantum field, the law of consciousness. Um, so if you are in a reality, if you find yourself in any reality that is undesired, um, that you find yourself not, um, you have enough awareness to realize that it does not resonate with you. The reason that this has happened is because you have chosen to tune into that reality. And it may be that if you have fallen back into a third dimensional state of consciousness um, or awareness, I'll say that, it may be that you are tuning into that reality unconsciously. So you're just sort of, this is when we, you know, fall back from the higher dimensions of consciousness and we begin again reacting on autopilot. Um, we're presented with a situation, it's happened to me just today, so I'll give a concrete example. Um, you're presented with a situation that um, elicits fear in you. Fear is all, all fear is illusion or distortion because um, I've talked about this too, because it's, it's contraction and consciousness wants to, will always want to expand in some way. Um, but more than that, it is, um, it is a, a reaction that has been ingrained in our, you know, um, in our habits, in our prior, um, third dimensional plane of operation, I guess. Uh, so, you know, in my situation today, I was presented with the situation of, with a scenario that elicited fear in me. Um, and I just, before I could even think about my reaction, um, I did not have the awareness. I fell back into, you know, old patterns and I reacted by, you know, projecting fear. And so, of course, that was <laughs> reflected right back to me. And when that happens, I've talked about this before too, but it really does bear repeating. When that happens, um, when you find you're in a, a state like that where um, you are projecting fear and then that other person is projecting fear, you know, you're reflecting that back to one another, you literally have to if, if it's necessary, do it physically, but you have to stop that interaction um, and you have to remove yourself from the situation and go and truly um, think about that from the perspective as the observer and as the, the learner. So you have to tune in to, um, you know, what lesson is being conveyed to you with this scenario. And then you can move on and, you know, continue to have that interaction. Um, so, you know, you, you truly do just have to, to sort of, um, you know, pull out and, or zoom out, I guess, and rearrange your frequency in whatever way. So um, you can, you have the ability to tune into a, a higher frequency reality one that is more resonant and really and truly um, your reality 
10 minutes ago does not dictate your reality that you're experiencing right now. Um, because it is, it is always about what you, what reality you are choosing to attune to. So in that way, we become the, the writers of our own story in very deliberate, tangible ways. So, um, similarly, if, in, if people in your reality seem to be following certain rules, um, you know, they're, uh, you know, just sort of falling in line with, with whatever. I'm sure we can think of plenty of, um, prescient examples that I won't bring up. Um, but, um, if others seem to be following these rules, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Um, you, as I mentioned in the transmission, truly, uh, you don't need anybody's permission. You don't need anyone's approval. Uh, those other people are in your reality because you are, pro and they're doing what they're doing because you are projecting them that way. You are tuning into that version of that, of those people. So, um, I hope I articulated that um, coherently. Um, if you find yourself uh, being rejected by someone that is outside of you, this is sort of the same thing. It's because you have not yet accepted all aspects of your yourself. And so even when you pull back and start thinking about it, um, you know, as more of the observer, you might think, okay, I'm receiving this, um, rejection because I have, uh, rejected someone else. I haven't shown them respect. I've, um, you know, failed to, um, view them with a spirit of unconditional love, whatever. Even in that scenario, it is you that is, um, manifesting that situation. Again, it is you tuning in to that version of that person on that particular timeline. And once you sort of realize this, it truly does transform all of your relationships. Um, it may not happen instantaneously because we are still, you know, at least somewhat bound to um, linear time, most of us anyway, uh, but we're working our way out of that. So it may appear to take time, uh, but it will happen. You moment to moment have to understand that, um, we don't have to do anything, <laughs> but you, if, if you want to manifest your desired reality, um, understand that you choose which version of that person that you tune into. Um, I know it sounds a little, you know, crazy and out there. Um, but I will say from personal experience, having trained myself on this, um, for a while now, it, it truly does transform the way you see other people. So, um, be aware that, uh, as you are embarking on this and you're being more intentional about your manifestations and they are speeding up, you might find yourself in situations where um, you could perceive them as being tests. And these are tests from the higher aspect of yourself. And um, it is my perspective that you yourself designed these tests for yourself. And you did so before what we might call incarnating. Um, but really, you know, you did this before making the descent in your consciousness. Uh, the 3D earth plane of existence is, as we know, it's a, a game or a training ground for our consciousness. Um, and once we, you know, get out of that, we understand what that you know, the purpose of, of all of that and why we would have, you know, made that agreement to descend. Um, and so when you find this, um, test of sorts being presented in your reality, uh, from my view, I'll put it that way, I view it as an opportunity to practice responding with unconditional love. 
And the reason for that is because as you ascend, and I talked about this in my um, video series about transitioning out of the 3D matrix, um, as you begin to ascend your consciousness into the higher planes of awareness, um, you know, it, well, you can't, you know, really and truly, if you are still uh, not responding with unconditional love, but furthermore, you know, if you do go into the higher planes of awareness um, and stop responding with unconditional love, it will be, um, it, you won't resonate with anyone or anything in that reality. So I hope that um, makes sense. So the last thing I want to add is that um, knowledge of all of this, as well as everything else, <laughs> literally, is available to everyone. It's available in the quantum field. It's available in the ether, what you might call it. Um, I'm coming to understand this more and more. You know, on the 3D earth plane, people often, um, very often, want, you know, proof or they want, you know, things to be, um, I guess, uh, documented or cited and sourced and all of that. Um, and, and, you know, they'll ask you, how do you know certain things? What a certain point of consciousness and, and, I have experienced this just to a limited degree, something I'm still working on, but at a certain point in consciousness, you are able to ask a question, and I'm sure, you know, you guys can um, understand this and attest to it, and you've had the same experiences, but you can ask a question, and the answer will come to you. Um, may not come right exactly when you want it, especially at first, and it may not come in the form that you think it will. Um, Something that I recommend really as a um, a way to jog your memory of being the creator. So um, a way to sort of um, tap into that field in which you can access any sort of knowledge. I'll put it that way. Um, a a tactic I recommend for that is to um, start doing something that you personally as an individual love, you know, whether that be writing, painting, reading, you know, what, however, playing music, anything. Um, and that often can, um, in my experience, help you to get into that that frequency um, because that's the second part of this uh, you simply must attune yourself which is your point of attention your awareness to the frequency of your truth as the creator and then all you have to do is sort of stand steady as the observer and you will see everything you want so um, you know when when like Dolores Cannon or other people speak about, um, you know, once the, um, the third eye opens, you're able to see, you know, all of these fifth dimensional, um, or once you ascend in your own consciousness, I'll put it that way, you're able to perceive all of these things in the fifth dimension that you were previously not able to. That's what this means. Um, it is, you know, when you are able to attune, the higher your frequency is, um, the more that you are able to perceive in your external reality. So I hope all of that um, makes sense. I hope I communicated it coherently. Um, if you happen to have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments or send me an email. Thank you so much for listening.